it seems it's probably the most commonly asked question in any job interview for any position in any company in any industry. You know what it is? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Right? It's so common, in fact, that for the interviewer, it feels like a softball question. And for the interviewee, it should feel like you've got a copy of the test ahead of time, right? That said, you would be surprised how many people flub that question. How does that happen? Right? Well, we get answers like, oh, I'm a perfectionist or I'm a workaholic. And honestly, I can't tell if they're bragging about it as a strength or apologizing for it as a weakness. The other thing that happens is I'll have a candidate that gives me back some form of the job description. So I've had accountants tell me that they're really good with numbers. <laughs> I've had teachers tell me I'm really good at explaining complicated ideas to other people. Good. Let me explain something. That's why you got the interview. Okay? Because I already know that about you. I've got a resume or an application, so I've got the flat two dimensions of you. The work preparation, whether through degrees or apprenticeships or internships, and I've got the work experience, job titles, positions worked, projects completed. What I don't have is that third dimension. I don't know what makes you, you. And why I'd rather have you on my team than somebody else who can present those same two dimensions to me. I'm eager to know what makes you you, whether you're going to fit into my organization, whether you can work well with the team that I've already put together and that I'm pretty pleased with, right? So what's happening here? Why are we hiding that third dimension? I'll tell you a quick story about a young woman incredibly bright. Right? She's put herself through three degrees, working two and three part-time jobs at a time. She called me up and said, Joe, I've been offered a position. I want to talk to you about negotiating for it. I said, okay, tell me about the position. And she did. And it sounded pretty flat. So I said, well... Tell me something, are you excited about this position? And she said, well, not really. I said, okay, well, is it in an industry? You're trying to get your foot in the door. Mm, no, not really. I said, are they at least paying you a knock your socks off salary, <laughs> right? And she told me the salary, and it did indeed knock my socks off. <laughs> not in a good way, okay? So here she was, having worked so hard, having put herself through three degrees and getting ready to take that first professional position in a position she wasn't crazy about, in an industry she wasn't wild about and didn't see much of a future in, and for a salary that she really couldn't even afford to live on. So I said, let's back up a minute. What's got you talking to these people about this job? And she says, well, Joe, it's a job. Okay. What more? Well, they approached me. I said, you're going to have a lot of vultures out there approaching you like this, let me tell you. They'll take advantage of you every time. I said, so let's take another pause. Why don't you tell me what your strengths are, and let's see how we can put those into this equation. She got quiet, and she says, well... I'm a good researcher. I said, of course you are. You're getting a doctorate in research methodology. <laughs> what are your real strengths? What makes you you? What do you bring to the table? And she said, Joe, I don't think I know. And I said, well, what does that tell you? She says, I guess I don't really know my value. Wow, right? So I said, okay, let's back up. Let's talk about learning more about your strengths, getting to know yourself a little better, 
Okay? Fortunately, there's some great instruments out there to help do that. Because what a lot of us do is we ask our spouse or our parents, what are my strengths? How honest do you think that is? <laughs> Come on. Right? What we really need is an independent measure. And that's what we have access to these days. Instruments like StrengthsFinder through the Gallup Corporation. 50 years of research on StrengthsFinder and the strengths movement. Asking the key question, what are your strengths and what makes you you, right? There are other instruments out there. The Values in Action is one assessment tool that's offered through the University of Pennsylvania and the work of Dr. Marty Seligman. There's also some other interesting areas of research that are kind of coming together in some really powerful ways right now about strengths. One is Strengths Finder. One is the work on appreciative inquiry, which is asking the question, what's right about me? And we can extend that and say, what's right about my company? What's right about my community? And we get some powerful answers to give us real insights about what is it that we're doing right? And another area of inquiry is positive psychology. Dr. Barbara Fredrickson over at Duke is doing incredible work that teaches us what is the power of optimism. And believe it or not, it can be learned, and it can be harnessed, and it can help us improve our lives. For Shelby, this young woman that I was working with, I wanted her to see what her strengths were in a way that could help her flesh out what it was about a position she'd really want that she could really get excited about. She took Strengths Finder. She called me up later and she says, I've got my top five strengths. I said, okay, let's start. Do they make sense to you? She says, well, they're kind of interesting. I said, do tell, right? <laughs> What's your top strength? Interestingly enough, for a researcher, her top strength was individualization. So why is that so interesting? Well, let's think about what researchers do. They ask questions, they seek solutions, and they try to push them all together, right? So that we can understand trends. We can understand what most people think is the right answer or solution to any given question. Her top strength is individualization. That tells me she's not so interested in this as she is in that. What are the outliers, right? Why aren't these people responding the same as the rest of the group? What is their experience? What is their point of view? What's their perspective that's making them respond differently? That's a very different kind of researcher, isn't it? Her second strength is activator. And what that tells us is that this is somebody who doesn't want to do research put data together with an analysis and hand it off to somebody and let it sit on their desk, all right? She wants people to know that they are going to do something with that research. She's an activator. Her third strength is strategic. So it's not just activation, it's meaningful activation. How are we gonna look at this problem, bring together all the voices, create a plan of action that is going to take us from where we are to where we want to go. That's going to help us actually solve the problem. Now she had something to work with, right? Now she knows the kind of questions that she asks matter to her personally. That what people do with her research matters to her personally. And that there is truly accomplishment at the end of the day matters to her personally. So this was a great exercise for a young woman starting out in a professional position. Well, is strengths finder or learning your strengths through one of these other assessment tools, is it really just for, for starters? Fortunately, no. It's equally valuable for people who feel like they're stuck, right? I worked with a client who was a community relations specialist for a corporation that had moved into a pretty difficult area of the country. There was a lot of poverty, illiteracy, violent crime, teenage pregnancy, just the kinds of things you would want to move somewhere for, right? Okay. So the company invested in a community relations specialist. I met with her. She came into an executive leadership interview uh, panel session. And if you remember Pigpen from the Charlie Brown 
cartoons where all the dust is flying. She was like that with papers and schedules. She was late, she was hectic, all of that. And she had to tell us how many meetings she'd already been in that day and how many meetings she had still to go in uh, after our session. Her biggest message her whole time was that she was busy, right? And the implication was that she worked harder than anybody else in the room. Well, you can imagine how that goes over, right? Okay, so we talked about it later. I said, let's talk about your strengths. And she says, my strength is solving problems like poverty and teenage pregnancy and illiteracy. And I said, how are you doing with that? <laughs> and it comes back that she's very frustrated. You can imagine why, right? These are tough problems. And she feels like her boss doesn't understand what she does, and she feels that she's not making the contribution she wants to make. Interesting enough, when she did Strengths Finder, guess what her top strength was? It wasn't community activism, and it wasn't problem solving. It was being a connector, right? And in that conversation, in that reimagining what her job and what her role was, she could create a whole new set of goals to understand that it wasn't her job to solve poverty or illiteracy or teenage pregnancy. Her job was to bring together the people who could. All right? It's a very different kind of goal setting with a very different kind of evaluation and a very different reward at the end of the day. So when we know our strengths and when we can use the language of strengths, we stop all the churning and we put ourselves in a position to talk with our bosses, to talk with our colleagues, to talk with others about what we do particularly well and how we make a difference. The great thing is, beyond entry-level positions, being stuck in the middle, there are ways that we can refine and reset our workplace persona every single day by using our strengths to illuminate that third dimension of who we are and what we bring to the table. I was sitting in an airport a couple of weeks ago. There's a young couple sitting behind me. And she's talking to her boyfriend about clearly her assessment of her first week on her new job. Okay? And you could hear frustration in her voice. So I'm listening. She says, well, I had this great assignment, and I had plenty of time to do it, and I finished it. And he says, so what's the problem? She said, well, I had too much time to do it. And I couldn't decide whether I should turn it in early or wait until the deadline to give it to my boss. I'm going, what? What? Okay, it turns out that being a Budinsky is not a strength, so <laughs> I kept it to myself. But I am thinking, boy, if I could give this woman some advice, you know what I tell her? Turn it in. Turn it in now. Turn it in early. Point out the accuracy of the work, right? Because my bet is her strengths are that she's an achiever. She likes to check things off her to-do list, right? That she's responsible. She sees how things come together and what she owns as part of her job, and then that she's valuing significance. I want to do more things that are meaningful and important. Ultimately, what she could have done is told herself, at least, but hopefully even her boss, you don't know me very well yet, but this is what I do. This is what I bring to the table. You're going to be pleased with me. You're going to want to keep me around. You're going to want to invest in me. You're going to want to pay me well. You're going to want to give me top assignments because I'm going to make us both look good. And I'm going to make our company look good and do better. How exciting is that when you think about getting up every day to go to a job and asking yourself the fundamental question, am I inspired today? Am I doing something that matters? And we all deserve to do things that matter. The important thing for her and for all the people in these stories is that by understanding their strengths, they now understood their value. And that is a job well done. Thank you.